I have asked for this radio and television time tonight for the purpose of announcing that we today have concluded an agreement to end the war and bring peace with honor in Vietnam and in Southeast Asia. We must recognize that ending the war is only the first step toward building the peace. This is the story of 10 Vietnam veterans, among hundreds of thousands who found success after the war. Battlefield to Beyond. Battlefield to New Horizons. This is the strength of our country. The fact that we can take in people from all over the world, that we are a nation of nations. We touch every nation and every nation on earth touches us. We have great soldiers to go forward and fight for us. We have intelligence people. We have all kinds of strengths and assets, but the greatest strength we have, the greatest asset we have to deal with the problems of our world and the challenges that we face is the nature of our society, our openness this wonderful, diverse society that we have. I served in the Vietnam War. I have more good memories of the experience than bad ones, but I've never wanted to relive it. I learned from it just as the country learned from it. Our defense relationship has evolved to an extent that was simply unimaginable even a decade ago. Our militaries exercise together. Indeed, the USS John McCain, a Navy destroyer, named for my father and grandfather, recently made a port visit in Da Nang, which shows if you live long enough, anything is possible. We are here to celebrate the completion of the first survey of the entire human genome. Without a doubt, this is the most important, most wondrous map ever produced by humankind. 33 years ago, as a young man serving in the Medical Corps in Vietnam, I learned firsthand how tenuous our hold on life can be. That experience inspired my interest in learning how the trillions of cells in our bodies interact to create and sustain life. Battlefield to the Cabinet. The Vietnamese have learned from their own history that we all have no permanent enemies, only friends yet to be made. Today when Americans hear the word Vietnam, they are able to think of a country, not a war. And that is our shared accomplishment. I've always believed that uh, America's role in the world uh, is one that, and we've had variations of this throughout history, uh, has been one that should engage uh, the world. Uh, we can't dictate to the world, but we must engage in the world. We must lead with our allies. Uh, allies are, as everyone in this room knows, particularly important. No nation, uh, as great as America is, can do any of this alone. Three million men and women in uniform returned from Vietnam, grateful to resume their lives again. We are, in some cases, just now beginning to care for them the way we should have decades ago. We pledge that this work will continue. In caring for them, we honor the 58,282 names who are memorialized here. Battlefield to the Gridiron.
you know, I was fortunate. We, we really had a good football team at Navy in 1963. We were um, um, number two team in the country. We, we uh, lost on a Friday night to SMU down in Dallas, Texas, which still drives you. I mean, there's, people, there's people there who never forget it. So, And then we lost in the Cotton Bowl. So I, I didn't really like the Cotton Bowl. Um, but I, but we, we had really a good season. And um, because of that uh, season and, you know, a, a great team, I, was, I did receive the Heisman Trophy, which uh, was a pretty neat deal. Because when I was in Vietnam, I actually, my, my job was with the Naval Sport Group was supporting the Marine Corps. Right. And oh my God, they're, they're fantastic. And my heroes really are, the, are, the, are uh, those that uh, have, have really made a career of uh, their, their military responsibilities. It was a Wednesday, I was in my locker, getting changed before we went to our first meeting, when all of a sudden one of my teammates hollered, hey Blyer, there's a piece of mail over here for you. And it was my draft notification. And within 48 hours, I was on my way to basic training, advanced infantry training, flew home, said hi, goodbye, found myself in San Francisco, boarding a plane, flew over the Pacific, oh, and landed in South Vietnam. And I built up a pretty good rapport with my physician. Um, but that burning desire, that question that we have of, you know, about the future, what do you think? What do you think, Doc? Do you think I can come back and play? Now, his response was something like this. <laughs> don't worry. He said, you're going to have a normal life. You're going to be able to do the things that normal people do. Just don't expect to get back in the gridiron. Battlefield to Hollywood. Nashville Glass, I saw the light, and that's going to do it for part number one of a Dawn Buster. This is Army Specialist Pat Sajak. Ten minutes of news and sports coming up. We'll see you at 710 with the second portion of this thing, okay? Well, I spent, you know, I spent three years in the Army. That was my, uh, that was my uh, contribution to the effort. That was a long time ago, and I'm, I'm proud of that service and proud that we can honor uh, Army families to this day, and we have them on the show all the time. Battlefield to the boardroom. I learned an awful lot in the Marine Corps, particularly about, I think, how to treat people, uh, lead people, um, which has played a big role in FedEx, a big part of the employee relations uh, systems and all that that we have at our company came from my experience in the, in the service. Like generations before you, you took off the uniform, but you never stopped serving. You became teachers, and police officers, and nurses, the folks we count on every single day. You became entrepreneurs, running companies and pioneering industries that changed the world. <laughs>